This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legend. I've always been a fan of a good origin story. Whether it's a person, or in this case, an ingredient and a recipe. I want to know the story and the history and how these things become what we know them to be today. And the story about iceberg lettuce is no different. Crisp head lettuce has been around for a very long time. But according to the Chicago Tribune, iceberg, which is a variety of crisp head lettuce, was invented by the Burpee Seed Company in 1894. To this day, about 90% of lettuce sold in the US comes from California, specifically the Salinas Valley, which is just the ideal climate for growing it. Back in the day, it was hard to distribute this perishable ingredient from California to the rest of the country without it spoiling. That was until 1920 at the dawn of the railroad industry, which ensured its explosion across the country as a household staple ingredient. And by 1950, it was the most consumed vegetable, not lettuce, vegetable in the United States. Eventually cooling technology and transportation would solve how to get this across the country without spoiling. But in the early days, they didn't have refrigerated train cars. So rumor has it they would bury the lettuce in crushed ice in big pallets to keep it fresh during transport. And they said the tops of the heads of the lettuce would peak above the ice, resembling icebergs. Hence the name iceberg lettuce. Iceberg gets a lot of flack because it may be not as nutrient dense as maybe a darker leafed green like a kale. But this idea that it's just water is nonsense. One of our favorite things is watermelon. It's all water. It's so much water we can drink it and we still enjoy it. Iceberg is very low in calories, which means you can eat a lot of it without adding a lot of calories, which makes it a great thing to eat when you're dieting. And probably its best characteristic is how crisp you can get it as a lettuce. Makes it a really refreshing kind of lettuce to eat, which is unique. And it's also why it makes the perfect wedge salad. The oldest recorded recipe of a wedge salad is in a historic cookbook from 1916, Salad, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dishes by Marion Harris Neal. Like a TV dinner, this was meant to be convenient. Quarter up a head of lettuce, pour some of your favorite toppings on top and your favorite dressing, and you've got a salad. Really easy and quick to put together. And as you eat it, the salad sort of incorporates itself, and you get this amazingly crisp texture, which works with the funkiness and the creaminess of the blue cheese and you have a smoky crunch from the bacon with a little bit of acidity from tomatoes and you have a fantastic salad. I'll admit, I used to think this salad was really stupid, but the more I tried, the more I realized maybe I'm the stupid one and that this salad is satisfying in a lot of ways other salads aren't. Now the key is gonna start with fresh crisp lettuce and a good blue cheese dressing. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna do is make the blue cheese dressing. If you're not a blue cheese fan, I'm, I don't actually love blue cheese, to be honest, but it, I do like it in this preparation. You can always leave the blue cheese out and you kind of are left with a ranch dressing. So let's get a bowl out. Now the base is, always starts out with equal parts sour cream and mayo. So I'm making one salad. I'm just gonna do like a couple tablespoons of each. And we're just gonna add a little buttermilk to get it to a thinner consistency, maybe a tablespoon or two. Now we're still gonna add vinegar and a few other things so we don't want it too thin. That looks like a good consistency to me. Maybe one or two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, white vinegar. I may want it a little bit thicker, just so it clings more to the salad, so I can adjust with a little bit more sour cream and mayo. Now another touch of honey, maybe a teaspoon. So we can add about a half teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of mustard powder. And then we'll crumble in our blue cheese. And I like to kind of smash the blue cheese into the sauce. So to sort of thicken it in a way, but also it kind of incorporates it. You could alternatively blend it if you want, so you don't have that those chunks of blue cheese. Some salt. Needs a touch of acidity. I'm gonna add some more vinegar. Now we can just cover it. Now there's only really two things we need to actually cook. And that is crumbled bacon. So what we're gonna do is we're going to chop it up into roughly small pieces, cook it until it's perfectly crispy, and then chop it up again into crumbles. So it just sticks better to the lettuce. And then we're gonna slice up shallot really thin. We're gonna fry them so we have some like crispy shallots. 
Now you really need thinly sliced shallots for this that are evenly thin. So the best use is the mandolin. So if you don't feel comfortable with a knife doing this, then just use a mandolin. Just get them as thin as you can. If you're not gonna use a mandolin, then you wanna split them in half and then cut them into half moon. I'm just gonna take these shallots and put them into a pot and fill it up with some avocado oil. Get the shallots on the stove over high heat and bring that oil up to frying temp. To cut the bacon, cut the strips in half into manageable pieces and then slice down the middle lengthwise and then chop them into little dices. Get those into a pan and then onto the stove. Before we jump over to the stove, we're gonna talk about my new session with gaming and thank our sponsor today, Raid Shadow Legends. Since the lockdown, for better or for worse, I've kind of become obsessed with gaming as a way to sort of disconnect and unwind from work, which is kind of hard to do. That's why I partnered up with Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a mobile fantasy game with really incredible graphics that's really raised the bar for mobile gaming in the last year or two. And this month, they're celebrating their second anniversary. So they have a packed schedule with amazing events to celebrate. They've got six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments running from March 1st all the way through the middle of April, all of them with insane prizes to win. They're even launching their first clan vs clan tournament to give players the opportunity to compete directly with other clans. I've always been a huge fan of anything fantasy, movies, video games, especially with things like Lord of the Rings. So when it came time to choose my character, I had to go with the Orc Gallic. You've gotta pick a character and build their powers and their armor so that you can level up your character and advance through the game. And right now, if you hit the link in the description or you scan this QR code on the screen right here, Raid's gonna hook you up with a free epic champion, Jotun. Plus 100,000 silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards so that you're all set up to get started gaming. All these treasures will be waiting for you right here. Thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring this video. With the bacon in the cool pan, get that on about medium-high heat for a minute or two to get it going, and then drop it down to medium-low so that we can slowly cook out and render that fat. Now over to the shallots. Once the oil starts frying, start mixing constantly until the onions are fully browned and then drain those of all the oil through a mesh strainer. Squeeze out the oil and then season with salt and let them dry. This is a method I learned from Chef Dan Kluger. There's a slight bitterness to these that go really well in this dish. Keep working the bacon until it's nicely golden brown. Once the fat starts bubbling, that's generally a good sign that the bacon's almost done. Once the bacon is nicely, you're gonna drain them of their oil just like you did the onions. Let them dry. They will both firm up as they cool. So now we can go about finalizing the prep for everything. Making sure everything that's hot cools down because this is, at the end of the day, a cool salad. So I'm gonna take my bacon and we're just gonna run them under my knife a few times to turn the bacon into bacon bits. That's gonna cling to the salad. So now we wanna make sure when we go to cut like our tomatoes, we have the same thing in mind. You're gonna need a sharp knife. Cherry tomatoes work best here. If they're small enough, you can just quarter them. But if you wanna go one size smaller, you can take those quarters and cut those in half. Then as a final garnish, we're gonna thinly slice some chives to go along with those fried onions. So you get some fresh onion flavor as well. As far as the lettuce goes, we have outer leaves. We've gotta get those out of here. That's not crisp, that's limp. Maybe one or two leaves is good enough. Now we got core, right? Quick little chuck, take it, smash it, remove it. Boom, the whole core easily removed. Forget about it. Now quarter the head of lettuce. Each quarter is gonna be a serving. Place one of those quarters onto a plate and start to distribute the creamy blue cheese. That's gonna allow everything to stick to it. Then you're gonna go in with the bacon, the tomatoes, the fried onions, the chives, a little salt and a little pepper. Now this is most certainly a fork and knife salad. You 
You can hate on it all you want, but the flavors and the textures speak for themselves. Now that you understand the salad, you could go ahead and make an Italian wedge salad, or a Mexican wedge salad, or an Asian wedge salad. By understanding how something so simple, but with only a few key elements can create something that is pleasing for your mouth to eat, you can apply that same idea to all the flavors that are custom to you. So have fun with it, give it a shot, maybe play around with it, maybe we'll make new ones in the future. But that's how to make a wedge salad, and that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, and go feed yourself.